cybersecurity is enormous. There are so many jobs out there. The more popular terms or jobs that you heard today are pen testing, ethical hacking, security engineers, cloud engineers, but what about identity access management? What is identity access management? Stay tuned in this video. I'm gonna break down what I am is today, and if it's something you wanna transition into, you came to the right spot. See you soon. What's going on everybody? I'm Andrew, and welcome to my channel, Everything I Am, where we talk about everything identity access management. My goal for these videos is to kind of teach you everything about I am in a more easy way for you to digest. Nothing too technical, something that you can understand, but my goal really is to help you think, is this something that I want to do? So, before I get started, if you enjoy everything that you hear, or are there some topics that you want me to talk about, subscribe down below, and also comment and let me know where you're coming from, what you do today, and are there some topics that you want me to discuss later on? I would love to hear from you. So, what is IAM? Gartner describes IAM as a discipline that provides the right people, the right access, at the, at the right times, for the right reasons. Let's talk about the right person. What is the right person? So, it could be an employee, a contractor, maybe a vendor. But how do I prove I am who I am? The way that we prove is called authentication. And what authentication is, is proving who I am. In the IAM industry, we kind of go by three, three ways. We talk about what I know, what I have, and what I am. So what does that mean? So what do I know? I know passwords, I know a PIN, and I might even know security questions. These are standard ones today that you know people know in terms of what I know and it's still used today. What I have. So I have a physical token, maybe a YubiKey. We have maybe a RSA token that has a number on it. And I'm sorry, I don't have one to show you because I don't use RSA tokens anymore. But then also that's becoming more popular, that is popular, is these, these, these apps on your phone. So you may have a Google Authenticator or you may have a Microsoft one. They all the big guys have it, but also maybe an Authy, right? That you'll log in with maybe a username and password, and then you have a second factor authentication that uses that number. And again, I'll talk more in future videos about multi-factor authentication or 2FA, but again, that's what I have and then what I know together. The last part that in terms of, of authenticating myself is who I am or what I am, and that is more or less biometrics. So we have our phones, Android, iPhones. We can unlock our phones. In the past, for iPhones, we can use our thumb to unlock it or our, our fingerprint, either one of them. And now today, for the new iPhones and, of course, the Androids, is we have unlock with our face. And sometimes now, we can unlock it with our, with our, our watches, our smart watches. So, for example, this is my, my Apple Watch here. Obviously, with COVID and us wearing masks, I need a way to unlock myself without taking off my mask, looking at my face, or putting in my passcode. Now you have a way that once you do it the first time, you can unlock it just looking at your watch. Again, so those are different ways. The government has a standard. So NIST, which is an organization that defines standards, they do have a, I believe it's 863 and 63A, that talks about digital proofing. And I'll link that down below for you to look at. And we talked about the three levels of ways to really confirm you are who you are, and they have different ways and methods to, to kind of gain those levels. So we just talked about authentication. Let's talk about authorization. So authorization is once I get in, what can I do? So as a normal employee, I get in, I want to do my job, right? Maybe I log into like a Salesforce or maybe and do my time. Maybe I log into a shipping um, application and I do invoices, or I just surf the internet, you know, and download things and then send emails out to people. These are all different th these are all different parts of, of authorization. And again, in the IM world, there are kind of three main ways that we do authorization. We use ACLs, which is access control list. We do RBAC, which is role-based access control. And we do ABAC, which is attribute-based access control. And a fourth one that 
is getting steam that maybe is not getting the coverage it should be is PBAP, which is policy-based ice control. And I am still learning policy-based too. And again, I hope in future videos, I talk a little bit more about that, which is what I've been reading. PBAC or policy-based ice control is a combination of ABAC and PBAC. So ACLs work quickly. Think of it as a one-to-one -one relationship. So I... I'm given access to, let's say, to Outlook, for example. That might be one ACL. But what if I can also download stuff from the internet? But maybe it's particular browsers. Those can be se different separate ACLs. So that's kind of what is a one-to-one. -one, and you map those two users. RBAC, or Robux Ask Control, think of it as, as entitlements, right? So ACLs can be looked upon as entitlements. What if it's a bundle and I want to create a role? A common one that is used today is job title. So let me give you an example. If I'm a bank teller and I'm a bank manager, those are two different jobs, right? But maybe they share some things together. So for example, if I'm a brand new hire at a bank and I'm a bank teller, maybe I need to access four or five things, email, internet, maybe my timekeeping software, and maybe, maybe the cashier register software. That can be rolled into a bundle and every single New bank teller will get that one role, and but within that role are multiple entitlements that make up their job. So for a bank manager who maybe has to do approvals of timesheet or maybe have access to other applications that a bank teller shouldn't have, they might have additional entitlements and then we maybe bundle that into a role. So that's really quickly what RBAC is. And ABAC, what ABAC is, is more granular, right? Or more specific. And that could be specific attributes. So again, let's use our same example, right? So we have our bank teller and our bank manager, but what if bank tellers in Virginia can only have access to certain applications that are only Virginia based? But then if I have a bank teller in let's say New York, for example, maybe they have applications because of different rules of the state, right? So that's a prime example where maybe a location, so let's say a city, state, and zip code, we might factor that in so then the system knows oh, I have a new bank teller today, they're based on Virginia, I'm gonna give them this access based on that attribute, where then in New York, I'm gonna give them that access. Now, if I try to access something from the Virginia branch, using my New York account, for example, I might not be able to see that. So again, that's really quickly what ABAC is. And again, in future videos, I'll talk more about these um, authorization and talk about the pros and cons of each, right? So you can understand it better. Now, the last part of the A's, right, that I want to talk about in terms of, of IAM and Gardner's definition is accountability. Really what that means is I'm being held accountable for what I do in the system today. And really what that means is it's audit logs or I'm tracking. Again, prime example, bank teller. I log into work every day. I go into the cashier system. I am counting money. I am doing checks. Maybe there's a check and balance that states when I log in, if there's a timestamp associated to that and it tells exactly the company, what am I doing at the, at the time? So if something should happen, or let's say a breach happens, they can go back and comb the logs. Also, in terms of audit, audit logs is they can also look to say, okay, I'm keeping people accountable for, for what they're doing. And two common things with accountability that you'll hear of is um, SARS Bain Oxley, again, that that compliance and of course the uh, GDPR, which is a European model that they use today. So that helps with compliance for that. So those are in a nutshell, if you wanna know in terms of the IAM definition from Gartner, the right people, which is employee, workers, vendors, whoever, once you prove who you are, um, the right access, what am I doing for my job? The right, the right reasons, am I just being a cashier and just taking checks depositing, giving back money to my customers? Am I doing other things like mortgage approvals, submissions for customers at the right time? Am I doing it during the day? Am I can do it any time for that reasons? And again, companies do have policies out there that say, you know what, from nine to five, you can access your system. And after that, we shut it down. Right people, right access, the right time for the right reasons. I want to talk about a couple of what I call the branches of IAM. So let's talk about specifics. So you have CIAM, which is Customer Identity Access Management. You have B2B, which is Business to Business. B2C, Business to Consumer. And also you have Workforce, which is more the company. And again, I will break that down in future videos, but really quickly for everybody. CIAM, think of them as your DoorDashes, your Grubhubs, right? These kind of, these kind of different applications that I'm managing a customer but the customer 
is logging in or they're registering their account. They're giving you personal information, address, maybe their uh, payment information from that perspective. So this is all personal. How do I manage that? How do I give them access? Can I use other applications like a Facebook or a Google or a Gmail to log in? Again, future videos, I'll talk more about this in depth. Business to business, business consumer are very similar. Really what that is, is businesses that allow other entities to access their system. What's the process there? How do I manage them? Do I give vendors more access than I should? Should I manage them? How do I give the information from, let's say, a UPS and I'm an Amazon? What do I give a UPS person logging to my system today? How do I manage their credentials? How do I manage a person? Should they tell me when UPS person leaves, how do I disable their account? These are all different questions that, again, I want you to think about and want you to understand this is what we do today in IAM from a consulting perspective. And workforce. Finally, workforce is what I really am specializing in, but really what workforce is, is managing employees or user lifecycle management. Again, let's go with the bank teller scenario that we talked about earlier, right? So when a person gets hired, maybe there are some particular things that I want to grant them the day they start, but what if I get promoted to a branch manager? Maybe I'll, I'll inherit or get more rights that, that I have, but then what if I transfer to a different branch? Do I keep my access at that branch? Probably not. But again, that's all workforce management. And then what if I leave? So if I if I just leave, go to another job, for example, right, I should have my account terminated or disabled. That's everything workforce management or workforce I am is kind of we think about that from that perspective and what we want to offer there. I want to talk about current events today that talks to you or tells you more about how important I am is today for us. On my left hand shoulder here, you'll notice here, you see some crazy new hacks or breaches that have occurred today. Two big ones that come to mind. Number one, the Colonial Pipeline hack. Those who live in the East Coast, you know this very well. I live in the DC metropolitan area and we were hit hard. There were crazy lines for gas and I know we work from home today, but to even think about sitting in a long line for gas and the price went up was just mind boggling. And what happened was the Colonial Pipeline, they, they had a compromised password and that was sitting on the dark web. Somebody got a hold of, of that password and they're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to try this, this password out. Maybe it'll work. It did work. And the problem was that password was associated to an admin account. And for those who don't know, when you're an admin or a super user, you have rights to the keys of the kingdom. And what happened was the persons or persons or that group that was identified got in and more or less just shut that down and put them on ransomware. There might be some other factors that were included that have caused this, but really essentially what I've read, and again, in the report that I'm showing up here, is they had a compromised password, they logged in and shut things down in ransomware, and that caused crazy headaches for all of us here in the East Coast. Another big one that you might not have heard of was a crane unit in New York. So a user, or I should even take it back, a former employee got fired and they're escorting her out the door. Their policy was, hey, I'm going to disable their account when they leave this, the premises. The problem was this was a manual process. So two days later, the person who got fired said, you know what? Let me try to access my account. They got in. And this person went to town on the crank unit. They deleted over 21 gigabytes, 21 gigabytes of data. And these were customers who were doing mortgages, even to meeting minutes that personal information from their stakeholders or board members, which was crazy. Yes, the credit union had backups, which is great, but it cost them $10,000, $10,000 for them to restore everything and put the, all that work to get it back. I'm not sure if they had that in the budget, but again, it was not fun. And think about that. These two scenarios, something that if you're a IAM expert or somebody who knows their best practice of IAM, you would help them out. Say, maybe we should not recycle passwords for the Colonial Pipeline hack. And maybe every 30 days we say, you know what, let's change our passwords or let's rotate our passwords. Also, maybe let's not reuse password history for the past, let's say, 30, 30 times, right? In terms of the credit union, another thing you can think of for them is, hey, when they're walked out the door and they're fired, I'm going to disable their account, or maybe that's done automatically, right? You'll go to a system, click two, three buttons, maybe get an approval here and there, and once that's done, 
the process of disabling their account is automated so we mitigate that risk of having them be able to log in. So these are two prime examples of something that, as part of IAM. So I hope that was an amazing I am one on one for you. And again, we will break down everything that I talked about in future videos. Also, if there's something that you want to listen to more in depth, I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago for a great nonprofit CSMP that's on here, and I'll link that down below for you, which is about an hour long, where I talk about everything you heard today in the video, but a little bit, a little more depth. So again, it's down below for you to link out. Please take a look at it. And again. If you heard everything here and you loved it, you want to see more, subscribe below, comment, let me know some more topics you want to hear about, and be on the lookout for more future videos where I talk, again, more about authentication more, authorization more, RBAC, ABAC, but also what's really passionate that I love to talk about more is career transition. Again, if what you heard today is something that, that you are interested in and you want to do more, you want to hear more, I am going to post more videos in the future that talks about resume writing, talks about interviewing. And I think the biggest point of all that I want you to really take away from this is I don't have experience and I want to begin to I am. How do I show that? Again, future videos, I will help you out there. I will show you some ways to show hiring managers or to write your resume that says, you know what, maybe I don't come from that industry, but I know these concepts. So stay tuned for that next and until then thank you so much for for watching the video and as always i want to tell you guys to always stay curious because you never know see you next week come on you spurs